Hey guys, it's Stealth here, and I have something a little unusual compared to what I typically do on the channel today. Um, over the past weekend, I had the chance to play the Black Ops 3 beta with my buddy uh, Josh494, who uh, uh, is a part of the Pixels assembly group along with me. Um, and I figured I'd also post a bit of an impressions video as far as to what I thought about it. And general consensus, I like it. I really do. I mean, like, I always liked the past Black Ops games before, as far, as far as Call of Duty goes, uh, but I genuinely do like Black Ops 3. As far as the multiplayer is concerned, like, I had fun, which is a little odd, because I was getting a little tired of the series in general. And I'm going to stop right here, and I'm pretty sure some of you guys are like, whoa, you actually play Call of Duty? What the heck's, like, crazy going with you, man? Like, what are you doing? Uh, I've always liked shooters. Um... I was a fan of Call of Duty back in its heyday. Uh, the last one I played, I think, was Black Ops 2. Yeah, and I skipped out on Ghosts, I skipped out on Advanced Warfare. And I, that's where it stopped for me. Um, with Black Ops 3 returning and everything like that, like I didn't expect a Black Ops 3 at all. I thought it was done, but here it is. Uh, I'm pretty darn excited for it. Uh, Will I be covering it? Maybe? Yes and no, I'm not entirely certain. But, uh, anyways, this is about the multiplayer and stuff, which, you know, to sum it up in a word, as Josh put it in the video, uh, well, not in the video, but when we were recording, he said, basically, like, it's like Halo 5, but a bit of a faster pace, and I more or less agree with that. Uh, what will you expect to find here if you didn't get a chance to play it yet? Well, uh, for starters, the pick 10 system you had from Black Ops 2, that's in here. So you get your wild cards, you get uh, to swap out anything you want and just go nuts with how you want to create your classes. Uh, I think I had a primary weapon build that had six attachments on it, which was kind of impractical. It had no grenades, no perks, no nothing. It was just that weapon, but it was pretty cool to get just kitted out that much and just go crazy with it. Um, also new to the experience, however, is uh, the whole cybernetic enhancements, transhumanism, and all that stuff, which means you get lots of cool stuff. And it's kind of a similar vein as the exosuits in Advanced Warfare, but I gotta tell you, it just felt really fluid. You don't so much get to choose, like, special abilities you get with your exos, it's just like everybody has the same core set, like, everybody has thruster packs so they can all jump high, everybody can wall run so they can get around maps pretty crazy especially with how the maps are designed in this game um everybody can do power slides like under bridges or things like that to get a quick getaway or maybe rush up to an enemy really fast everybody has those core movement things um what really is the uh specialization i should say of this game is uh specialists there's nine in the game. Eight were in the beta, and I got the chance to play with a good number of them. Um, they each have their own unique skill sets, like the one I was favoring, Seraph. She has this revolver that basically is a one-shot kill thing, and it has a crazy, it's pretty much unlimited range and everything like that. Or she also has an ability which uh, allows her to get more points when she's charging objectives or things like that. And there's other specialists with other abilities as well, like one of the starter specialists, Outrider, she either has this compound bow with these explosive bolts, or she has this vision pulse ability, which allows her to basically tag enemies that are just near her vicinity, and it'll show up visually like as a red silhouette to everybody on the team. Uh, you also got specialists like Rain with his gravity spikes, which just basically allow him to wreck everything right near him. He got me quite a few times, let me tell you what. Um, but all these specialists have these different abilities, and it really uh, adds a bit of an element to how you play, like how you build score streaks and stuff like that. Um, with, oh, I should mention score streaks. Uh, kind of similar to how they've been doing it before. Uh, if you get score streaks and you die, score streaks you use from your past life, they'll count towards your next course. Scorch Reset's nice. Um, but they don't get you as many points as 
uh, specialist ability. Well, the specialist abilities, they will get you full points no matter what, and you'll always be able to get them because there's like a timer that will basically say, oh, hey, you can use this now. But uh, uh, when you make kills and charge objectives and things like that, it'll speed up when you can get your specialist ability, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, out of the gameplay modes they had there, there was a one unique one, which I didn't get a chance to record, unfortunately, which was Safeguard. You basic, If you played Payload on Team Fortress 2, you have an idea of what this is going to be like. There's one team with a robot, and they have to get it to the other team's base and blow it up. And then, at halftime, it switches. Attackers to defenders, defenders to now attackers. And if both teams either don't score, or they both score on the other team's uh, base, play starts again, except this time, now you're setting a time to beat to get the robot there. Uh, I had a lot of fun with the mode, but unfortunately, uh, there was a lot of lag issues and things like that with the servers, so aside from Team Deathmatch, we weren't able to get much good footage, and even then, from Team Deathmatch, it was kind of a mess sometimes. And we tried our best, you know, it doesn't always work out. Um, what else can I say about this beta? There were four maps that were included with it, which I believe were Evac, Hunted, Combine, and Stronghold, I believe it was, which, uh, the snow map, whatever that was, I'm certain it would be on the screen somewhere. Uh, the, they were mostly, I would say, medium-ish sized maps, uh, with a few exceptions that snow map had a lot of, uh, long sightways for snipers, which was pretty good, but otherwise, felt very much arena-ish like. I'm hoping there's a little bit more variation when the main game comes out for multiplayer, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, but overall impressions of this game. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, which was surprising, I wasn't expecting to. Uh, but it was fun to just use the weapons and like just keep advancing them, because you do unlock their parts just by, uh, using the guns, which is nice. You don't have to pay for anything. Um, like, I had a lot of fun just, like, at one part, it was just, like, me wanting to just unlock weapon attachments, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then I always just felt kind of awesome for just taking all these, like, paths and stuff and, like, using the wall run to get behind enemies and things like that. It was, it was pretty cool. Uh, will I be getting the game? I probably will. I'm not pre-ordering it. I'm not probably going to get it at launch, but I probably will get it at some point, and then I think I will play more of that for you guys to see. Uh, don't expect anything professional, though. I'm not a super hardcore shooter guy, but I do like my shooters. So, yeah, that's basically the end of my uh, Black Ops 3 impressions. Uh, to sum it up, it looks good. So I'm excited to see what they do with it next, uh, and where it goes from here. And that'll be it for me, guys. Uh, and anything black ops related comes up i'll be sure to let you know in a future video that's gonna be it for me i will see you all next time hostile care package overhead be advised hostile care package overhead exactly as briefed good work hardly a challenge <laughs>